Friends, the next speaker for today's uh, this event on space technology and innovation is Mr. Hakan Buske, President and CEO of Swedish defense and security company Saab AB. Mr. Buske took up his position on, I think he's fairly new now in this Saab at, on 1st September 2010 and brings to Saab more than 20 years of experience in program and operations management and business development from national and international commercial industries. Most recently, he served as CEO and president of EO Nordic AB and EO Swergi AB. They are the world's largest investor-owned energy company with European presence that is unique in the energy industry, nuclear, hydro, etc. Before entering into energy business, Mr. Bushke had long experience in fast-moving transport and logistics business. Among other things, Mr. Bushke was responsible for Schenker uh, in Europe several years as head of the production company in the Falcon Brewery made him an expert in beer. That's very nice for a master of engineering to be expert in beer. I think he knows all about the European beer and also about the aircraft, truly like Vijay Malaya, I think. You know. <laughs> so <laughs> he's the chairman of the board of transportation company, Green Cargo AB, and has served as chairman of Oskarash, uh, nuclear power plant. So one can see that uh, and he's a master's degree holder in mechanical engineering from Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg and he also has uh, a, a licentiate from the Institute of Transport and Logistics. He currently resides in Stockholm though I think he belongs to northern Sweden must have been the beneficiary of ozone envelope there <laughs> and the freshness of ozone there. So it will be nice to hear from this ozone friend, please. Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. My aim is to describe mainly two things. Uh, one is why we are around, why Saab exists and another thing, how we see on transfer of technology, not just between countries, but how we had spillovers within Sweden that basically founded some of the most successful companies in the world today. That's at least what I have tried to achieve. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here to speak in front of you. Uh, you represent uh, the world's largest uh, democracy. I visit India uh, for my first time exactly one year ago at, at the biannual World Association for Nuclear Power Organization in Delhi. I didn't have any idea that I should start to be in the, in the defense and security industry. Uh, since I started in Saab, I have been here four times. Uh, it's a fascinating country. And uh, uh, warm people, skilled people, and you living a dream that I believe sometimes in the Western world that we have forgotten. So just give you an experience or a view of where I'm coming from. This is my hometown, basically. We have more elks, reindeers, bears, lynx than people. Uh, the size of this area have, is the same size as Germany with just 800,000 people living there. Sweden, by the way, it's just 9 million people with the same size as France, 450,000 square kilometers. So I think that's one of the reasons I like it here. Here you see people, and also you seem to be able to cope with each other. Saab was founded in 1937. It was so between the First World War and the Second World War, Sweden have decided that it will not be any war anymore. And a uh, lot of our capabilities had gone away, and we, were, uh, relied, we relied on our partners when it comes to the supply for, for our armed forces. Well, as you know, during the mid-1930s, uh, uh, the world started to uh, arm up, and uh, we were not able to get any supply anymore. So my chairman's grandfather, uh, Marcus Wallenberg, 
shaked hand with our prime minister. That was the 2nd of April, 1937. He said, we will build aircraft for, for the Swedish state. And that's how we kicked off. It was basically meant uh, uh, the industry saw uh, a security for defend our way of living, our democracy, our uh, way of being natural uh, and uh, not depending on any alliance. This is a picture of uh, the first aircraft, uh, the first one I maybe uh, remark, the one with the seventh and the three crowns. It's the B-17. And then the latest one, the Gripen. Uh, it will come a new version now in Mars, the first version of our next generation. So next picture we will show that as well. Uh, Saab, uh, we are a, a multinational company. We have our own activities in 32 countries. That was not the case basically uh, before the Iron Curtain fell down. Then more or less everything we sold uh, went to, to the Swedish state. But it has been a big transformation the last uh, 20 years. As you can see, we are in uh, aeronautics. That's the biggest part. But we're also big in uh, the land domain, but also the uh, naval domain. This is our organization. We are divided into five business groups. And I will try to connect this together with our offer to, to, the, to the market. We have um, our aeronautics, where we are building aircraft, and I will go more de deeply into that. Our dynamics, that's missiles and other things. That's mainly due to shoot down aircraft, so that's maybe a good business model. Uh, and uh, then we have our own uh, sensors and radar uh, applications. Uh, we do uh, IESA technology, weapon location radars, the GRAFs, the Arthur, and also our own REI. We have our support and services part, but also uh, our uh, security and defense solution. That's mainly combat uh, system, uh, C4I. So this is how we steer it internally. But the offers that we do to the market is divided into civil aeronautics, uh, we are, have a fairly big portion of aerostructure. We do the, the wing uh, uh, construction for the 380, the doors for the 787. Uh, we have uh, critical infrastructure, how to monitor and steer traffic in a city. Uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, our air domain, uh, with, with the grip and, and, and other things, but also our naval domain and the land domain. These are steered through 40 different product areas. We try to, of course, gain um, uh, momentum and synergies with everything that we do and using uh, same time of development knowledge and uh, methods, but at the same time also the same technology base that are within all those uh, products. Yeah. These are the aircrafts that we uh, have built. We have built more than 4,000 aircraft since we started the 2nd of April 1937. Today there are nearly 800 of them in, still in use. Uh, and uh, by the way, Sweden had the sec third largest air force during the 50s and the 60s. We spent nearly 20% of our uh, uh, state budget on defense during that time. One thing, a small country with just 9 million people who have come up with the stupid idea to do a lot of things by, by ourselves. Of course, we also have international partners. But we could see during the 70s that if we should be able to keep these skills and increase the skills, we could not increase the cost because then we will go out of business not just so, but Sweden as a whole. So during the 70s, we decided to change our philosophy, how to develop things, not uh, have a, scrapping the idea to have a more operational efficiency, but we need to be able to decrease the cost. And that we have been able to do with the Gripen, due to the setup, the development methods, uh, and we also able to do that uh, further on. So 
from the first version A, B to the C, D, we were able to cut the development and production cost with 20%. And when we go forward now, we can see up to 40% uh, uh, cost reduction when, it, uh, when we are now launching the EF version, the NG. And of course, um, uh, that is also a very important uh, competitive advantage that we have around the world. And it's not just the development and uh, the maintenance cost that is important for a small country like Sweden. We don't have enough. If you have 1,000 airplanes that we had during the, the 50s, we can't have 50 to 100 people turning around one aircraft when we are in combat. We just afford five. Otherwise, we don't have enough people. So it's a very efficient system as well. Uh, coming back to transfer of technology, uh, many of you are using a cell phone here today, I can see. Uh, but what you maybe don't know is the basic technology is coming from Saab. The links that have been developed between the data links between our aircrafts, the ground station, it's an invention that uh, kicked off into the cell phone. Uh, we have made an investigation, and that's why I think it's so wisely that uh, Indian uh, have decided to have transfer of technology, now how, but you also have decided to have know why. That will give you as a nation uh, a, a momentum and will also give you as a nation a lot of spin-offs if you have a method to take care of it. Uh, the defense industry, at least it has been that in Sweden, I think that's the same thing in the United States, will create a lot of uh, synergies that you will be able to take care of into other industries. So the, the full grip and program in Sweden until today have costed 15 billion euros, and we are nearly having 40 billion uh, less just for, for the grip and uh, activity. Uh, so going into that and also using that in some kind of method, it's extremely important. So we divide it, of course, in, in, in different parts when we do this. So we have a strategy when we handle these spillovers and also how we are able to take them further on that we, of course, are sharing with, with our partners here in India. Of course, you have the, the core technology, but you also have the related uh, technology that this core technology could be used to, to lift related technologies. And then you have uh, engineered technology that you can put to, to, to a product. So all those things then uh, lead to the industrial part of it in the end so you can make some money out of it. And uh, we have been using that for many years and um, I will come back to that as well. We are belonging to, to, to the Wallenberg Group and that's a way we try to share things in, uh, between us and spillovers from this industry. We also have a venture uh, um, activity where we are taking our knowledge uh, and spin-off and putting them into to companies. These are things that we are currently looking into now, how to develop that in, in India. And uh, uh, that have been very successful. Uh, nearly 100 uh, million euros we have just been able to turn over the last couple of years, but uh, the tra track record uh, going back the last 75 years is, of course, much bigger. Uh, so, so basically, aiming for that industrial expansion, you can't just be isolated on having a program like the Gripen in the nation or a fighter program. And uh, uh, it gives right way, if you handle it right way, industrial expansion. Uh, if you take the technology, know how and know why, as you, you have planned here, uh, it will give a, a, a lift in some levels for, for the rest of the industry, no doubt about that. Uh, so the exchange of technology... Uh, that could be used then, of course, with Sweden and also Europe, synergies between, between us and stimulation and with innovation around India. We have strong business relations, so we have done that now for, for 75 years. And uh, some of these companies have been in India, I know, for the last, well, 100 years. 
Saab have been in India since the mid 70s and uh, these are possibilities but it's also a, a short over companies that have had the, its origin from Saab ones and these advanced technology that we have been able to create mainly doing fighters and other things. So I think your wisely strategy to, to create more know-how and know, know why in India is the right way. And I think that has been discussed uh, the whole day uh, and also the headline of, of this conference is cooperation. Uh, so um, we are ready. Thank you. Oh, please. French, that was an interesting talk by the CEO of Saab about the history of the company, the kind of products that they have dealt with, the confidence that have exuded as they grew into a very viable and potent defense industry, uh, enlarging their scope of their work in different uh, knowledge-based areas, and also partnership across the world and uh, willing to share that knowledge uh, with Indian partners, hopefully, <laughs> or any other partners in the world, and uh, make the best use of uh, collaborative effort for furthering the uh, knowledge or value additions, as you may call, into products that may interest the country. So we will have another five minutes for any specific questions to the CEO. You, you can al also ask him formulations of beer also. There's no bar in asking questions, please. Uh, hi. Uh, here in the last row, my question was on uh, what is your perspective on uh, the 50-seater turboprop market in the future? Well, uh, today, uh, as you know, we have nearly uh, 450 turboprops flying around the world, uh, even though uh, we took a decision a couple of years ago to, to step out of that market. But we could see a great opportunity uh, going forward in that market. Sir, this, my question is, can you just give uh, the approach adopted by SAB in the operation clearance you have followed for the Gripen, or is it only the IOC and FOC, or only FOC, or you have multiple stages of clearance? What is the approach you adopted? I don't really know if I got your question. Sorry. See, on the when the prototype flies, when it reaches a maturity, we declare the aircraft is safe for operation by services. Yes. And what is the approach you adopted finally before you reach the final configuration and eventually saying it is mm -hmm. fi final operational clearance? Yes. You mean for the next generation? Yes. The even SAB, the Gripen yeah. as well. For the, for the Gripen next generation? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, we, we made a, a demonstrator last year that had been flown, I think, more than 100 shortages. Uh, also fly down here to, to India. What we are doing now, and that will be launched in, in Mars, uh, the first version of the EF uh, test version will take off. So there are a program uh, going forward uh, for that according to plan. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, together with the Swedish Air Force, of course, uh, having that on, on track. So uh, we, we, we do it in a different way. I, I think that's... Uh, Going back to, to a small nation like, like Sweden, uh, you can also say Saab is a fairly small company to do everything that we do. So we have to do it in a different way and more efficient. So um, we don't start with 20 planes, we, we start with one. And uh, it has to be mature, as we have shown, uh, to go forward. Does that answer your query? Okay. I think that's it's good to discuss these issues in depth later. <laughs> uh, but surely uh, he has thrown a lot of ideas, and uh, I think the aeronautical uh, development agency can take you 
because they have worked on a single engine. If it's a single engine aircraft, of course, experience uh, will matter. Uh, India is also keen, I'm told, for an advanced medium combat aircraft of its own design. So maybe there are possibilities of uh, looking at collaborative uh, point, way of development if it's going to really help the country. Yeah, we are very open to that. And uh, it's a nice aircraft that you have built. So I, I, we, we are very open. So thank you, uh, Mr. Ashton Brishke, for this nice lecture. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Please be seated. Should I be seated? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs>